for the opportunity uh, to be here with you this week. It's been a wonderful week, and I'm thankful for all that God has done. But I want you to know it's not over, and it won't be over if we don't let it be over. And uh, I know that this is a conclusion of the conference, but may these things continue on. Amen. Amen. And uh, grateful for Pastor Garcia and, your, and his wife, and thank you so much, and all of you that have worked so hard. I tell you, I, I just really mean this. It's been so special to us to be here. The food, the fellowship, uh, just your love to us, and your generosity has just been... Um, overwhelming. And so thank you so much, uh, church, for your love to us and your encouragement. And uh, it's wonderful to be a part of God's team, isn't it? And to be on the winning side. Amen. You know, people play sports all the time and they do all kinds of crazy things to decide who's going to win and who doesn't. But I'm glad I don't have to figure that out because we know who's on the winning side because the Lord... He'll have the victory. He's had the victory, and we will for all of eternity. Amen? And uh, that's what this week's all about, is getting people on God's side and on the winning side through the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, I want to share just a few things in an update, and uh, then I'll have a short video from my recent trip over to uh, Kiribati. And so uh, just bear with me for a few minutes as I share some things. Um, our family has a lot of different things we're doing right now, I'll be honest with you. And, uh, but I'm grateful for the opportunity God gives us uh, to serve Him. And I'll tell you what, give me more, Lord. You know, people say, you're doing too much, Brother Deku. <laughs> my own dad says to me, and he's been a missionary for my entire life and a pastor before I was even born. And he says, son, you're doing too much. And I said, well, dad, you taught me that, you know, like you're the one that's uh, still going and at 76 years old and uh, has no quit in him, you know, and I'm thankful for that. But I'll tell you what, we got to do all we can for the Lord because he's coming again. Amen. And we'll get all the rest we need when we get to heaven. And uh, praise God for that and looking forward to the rest we get in heaven. But uh, may we just continue on as the Lord gives us these things. Uh, God called our family to the mission field, as I've mentioned already, and you may have seen our table, uh, to the country of Kiribati, and I did pronounce that right. It's Kiribati in the way you spell it, but T-I is an S in their language, and so blame a typewriter, don't blame me, uh, the man who went over there in the 1800s to give them uh, their written language had a broken S on their typewriter. True story. And so anyhow, he changed it to a T-I, which is supposed to look like a Latin symbol, and I don't know Latin, so you're on your own on that one. Uh, but uh, ever since, it's been Kiribati. Kiribati is located right on the equator of the Pacific Ocean. It's an, area, it's an island nation of 33 coral atolls, which means the average site's only six feet above sea level. Uh, well, the island which we lived on was the capital island of Tarawa, and it was just a sand mound out of the ocean. It's unbelievable. And uh, the capital island had the greatest population, and that's where we went. Some of you may recognize that name from World War II. A great battle took place on the island of Tarawa. And so God, <laughs> right, the Marines, <laughs> and uh, amen. And so we, uh, God put in our heart, and there's a long story to all this, so I'm going to just simplify it, but God... God miraculously called us there, and I'm so grateful for the privilege to serve the Lord and take the gospel to a place where we could not find a gospel witness of any kind, and uh, to God be the glory, great things he has done, and that pioneering spirit God put in our hearts, he led us to a place where we could see him do great things, and honestly, to God be the glory, great things he hath done, and so we were there and were able to see a, a church established and you know, there's a lot of adversity, but God gave the victory. And today there is now a, a church that believes the Bible and is preaching the Bible and a national is leading the flock of God there and the gospel is continuing to go on. I talked to him just on my way to church tonight and uh, told him I was going to a missions conference and encouraging people to pray for him and for the work there. And he said, thank you. Uh, you'll see him in just a moment on our video. Uh, but we, uh, God just has done amazing things. We were back in 2019, the end of 2019, on a medical furlough. Our daughter was getting some health things taken care of, and we had the clear to go back 
in 2020, and we're plans in May of 2020 to head back, and we all know what happened in, in April. And so it hindered us from being able to go back, and so the Lord, through circumstances and through direction, uh, that summer of 2020, uh, we were uh, just based in Knoxville and praying about what the Lord would have us to do. And we heard about two weeks of camp they were having out here at the Passage. And so we told Pastor Sexton, if you want our help, we're ready and willing. We're not, we're just kind of sitting here right now. So give us something to do, you know. And so we came out here and just an exciting time to see God work. And then uh, we went back and just praying about this and saying, Lord, what is it that you want us to do? And I could never get peace from the Lord or direction that our work in Kiribati was over. And, um, and I just I struggled with that. And I was surrendered to it. I really, really was and am. But the truth was is just asking the Lord for direction. And so, uh, but I said at the same time, we were burdened for this ministry out here because it's a pioneering ministry. And at the heart of all of it, uh, Pastor Sexton's vision was for church planting in the Northwest, and I love that. I love church planting, and to see God answering that now with the Grovers, and my prayer is for 10, 10 couples to come to the Northwest and to plant churches, and, uh, and maybe more, amen? And uh, I'm just praying for that because we need more laborers, don't we, in this area and around the world. And so uh, we came back, and when I told Pastor Sexton, I just said to him now, we, we might be willing to just come out and help until our country opens, you know, until things open up for us to get back. And uh, he said, that's exactly what I would never ask you to leave your field of service. He says, but it's like this. Sometimes, Joel, God will give you another child. Doesn't mean you get rid of the first one just because he gives you another one, you know. Uh, and I was like, that makes a lot of sense. And so anyhow, the Lord has continued to enable us, and you just have to spread your resources a little bit more, you know. And so we've seen God continue to do a work, and I'm so thrilled at all that God is doing both here and in the islands. And I want to see God do even more, don't you? I want to see God do even more. That song you sung tonight was so appropriate, because uh, I wish I'd given Him more. When we get to heaven, we're all going to wish that. We're all going to wish that we had done more. For the cause of Christ and for eternity. And so we're here now and we're serving the Lord. And people say, well, what's next? What's next is simply I'm taking each day as God gives it. And I know that he's given us a lot to do. And we're just going to keep doing it by the grace of God. And we're thankful for all the opportunities that he's given us. And we thank you for partnering with our family and what God's given us. Uh, I made a trip back in uh, February, and uh, this has been the first time we've been back for so many years. That's just unbelievable. And I was a little nervous, to be honest with you, uh, because I talk to them every week, but you never know what you're going to find when you come back to the field, you know. And it's just like, well, I just hope it's what it's what it's all says it's supposed to be. And I was just so thrilled to see so many of the people that are there that have grown in the work of the Lord, that are bringing other people to Christ and the church growing uh, under the leadership of this uh, national pastor. We able to, because of not being able to be back for so many years, we were only able to license him to preach right before I left, but then to be able to ordain him uh, to the gospel ministry, just a thrilling time. And then to uh, take 10,000 Bibles to Kiribati. And if you've not been there to my table we have one of our the copies of these, and they're beautiful Bibles. One of the things that when we very even before we were able to arrive there as missionaries, God, uh, I'm sorry, I'm a Baptist. I believe in the Bible. Amen. Can I hear an amen right there? It's this is the only thing that works. Amen. This is the only thing that will change the hearts of people, and that is the truth of God. And so we began to look into and work on the Bible for this country, and God. Uh, open doors for us and closed doors and we worked almost eight years on this this Bible um, the edition in which we were able to print needed it was printed in 1906 and it was kind of a lost thing a man gave 40 years of his life and did a wonderful job of, of putting this into their language he actually gave them the written language he's the one with the broken typewriter by the way and so um, 40 years of his life he gave but it was almost a lost thing and uh, we were able to find it. I don't have time to tell you all the miracles God performed, but then we began the process of typing the Word of God, formatting it, proofing it, reading it, proofing it again, 
I mean, you don't understand every jot and tittle until you do something like this. Let me tell you, it is a lot of work. But praise God, he gave the victory, and we were able to see these printed uh, by bearing precious seed in Milford, Ohio. But then the thing was, they were printed actually in 2020, and we weren't able to get them over there until just this year. Because of COVID messing up the shipping lines, we've tried every which way we could figure out, and we finally had to, and many of you prayed for that. Thank you for praying. And we're able to go through another country that gave us permission, and just a long story. But each step of the way, God opened the door. Then I'm like, I got to get over there. And, and the Lord opened that door, and I'll be honest with you, I, was, I wasn't sure about going because I didn't want to leave my family in Bennett. But God just directed in it and opened the doors and provided for them. You know what? We serve an amazing God, don't we? And so I was able to get over there and uh, just amazing things. The, the Bibles were supposed to arrive in December. And so I am figured if I go in February and book my tickets and make all the plans, that should be plenty of time. We have island time over there. Amen. It's a great thing. It's always very late compared to everybody else. The Bibles, though, didn't get there until the week I, w I arrived. But I couldn't have asked for anything more because I'm so grateful I had the opportunity to pull the Bibles off the ship and be the first to hand the Word of God to a, a person there in Kiribati. And I'm so grateful for that. We saw many people, many people. We handed out over 4,000 of them while we were just there and witnessed to countless of them. We saw people get saved. You know why? Because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And so there's another 6,000 of them along with 40,000 gospel tracts. And it is a smaller island, so it's doable. Amen? Uh, they're still working on that each week, going out, handing Bibles, going place to place, getting the Word of God. And I'm praying that the Lord will continue to do a great work there. It's amazing because it's a small little island and not a lot of people. It's, everybody knows everybody. It's amazing. And so it's unique because as we were there and we started handing these Bibles out, no one had ever given Bibles out in that country. And a lot of them are religious and they know about the Bible. But the truth is, is that they, nobody's ever done this. So they, they took it and they would ask, well, how much is it? And like, it's not for sale. It's for free. Really? Yeah. And so then some of the religious people had to make sure it was good, you know. And so we're like, dear, we heard this and we're like, dear Lord, let's pray that it's good to them. Amen. And don't let the devil hinder anything. And so the word got out that it was good. People started showing up at our house and at the church and they still are asking for the Bible. I told our brother, I said, hey, if there's anything that the Baptist church could be known for in Kiribati, and that is that we gave the word of God to that country, I'll take it. Amen. Because this is the, the truth of God. This is the gospel. And in the back, it has a great presentation of the gospel in their language. And will you pray specifically with me that God will just use this in a mighty way as it goes forth? We know it will not return void. Amen. It will accomplish what God sends it to do. And so we're asking the Lord to do this. And in the days ahead that many more places will receive the gospel and so I'm praying about uh, laborers. There, we need laborers there. We have some young men. Uh, we're, we had to close down our um, Bible Institute for about a year and a half because of COVID. We could no longer get things in there because of it. But we're planning on restarting that this October and seeing young men trained for the ministry. And my prayer is that multiplication will happen as new churches are started and laborers are sent forth and that that whole nation will receive uh, the gospel, Amen. and that churches will be established. And so if you'll pray with me, I sure would appreciate it. I asked them to show this video, and this is just several of the people there that are just saying thank you for sending the Bible and some pictures to see about my trip. And so, gentlemen, if you would show that, and then I'll come back in just a moment. Thank you. Hello, my name is Jerome. And I'm uh, thankful for this opportunity to be able to come to Kiribati with uh, Pastor Joe to pass out the uh, Kiribati Bible to the people of Kiribati. And the, I see there's a great need because uh, people need the gospel here. Uh, I was able to uh, take some Bibles to my own uh, biological uh, father and relatives here in Kiribati. And we're just so thankful for uh, your love and support uh, to this um, uh, this work, the 
It's great work to share God's word with the people of Kiribati. And uh, we just continue to pray for them that people will use it and read it. And we've already had good uh, feedbacks from the people here saying that it's really uh, easy to read and understand. And hopefully they, uh, they understand the gospel that's in it and get saved. So we thank you so much for your love and support. And uh, we really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for sending the Bibles here in Kiribati. Uh, it is very good we have a Bible and we share to our families and uh, also our, the school that I, we work with and um, they're happy to receive the Word of God and we are happy to receive the Bible. We are so thank, thankful to God and may God bless you. Thank you so much. I'm the Ben in Maori. My name is uh, Pastor Abai. And, uh, I am so thankful for the for your support to us about the Bibles that you can uh, ship the, those Bibles to us and the tracks. It is so great that we can have the, the opportunity to share with the people and to give out the Bibles to the Kirbas people. And you know the the, the people in Kirbas they do really appreciate the, those Bibles. And I and I'm so thankful for for those uh, for what you have did for what you did in the for the Bibles for us in Kiribati and I'm best in Daraba for your support. Maori, uh, my name is Daisy and I just want to thank thanks uh, for the support for sending the Bible to Kiribati and now I'm very grateful because we can uh, give it out to our friends, our families and everyone in Kiribati. And because I know the Bible uh, helps me a lot through uh, my Christian life, and so I'm so happy too because I can give it out to people in Kiribati. Thank you. tell you what, there's nothing better in this world than to be a part of God's yeah. work. I look forward one day to introducing you to those precious people that are just wonderful, that have found the truth. How shall they hear? If we don't get burdened and do more for the cause of the gospel. And God is able. People told us it wasn't possible. And there are so many times I thought it was impossible. But God made it possible. Amen. I don't want to be a part of anything else that isn't done except through the power of God. Amen? Amen. Yeah. And we're going to see great and mighty things. And I'll tell you, when we get to heaven, it will be worth it all. Amen? Yeah. I want you to pray for us, too, here at the Passage Northwest as we uh, continue to just seek to train young people. And we're so grateful for these students. You pray for them as they go back on Friday this week to finish their finals, and uh, some of them are graduating and uh, need to come back to the Northwest, amen? Yeah. Amen. Um, no, do what God's will is for your life, amen? But uh, we can be a little prejudiced about that. I'll tell you what, I'm praying for some of them to, God, to call them to go to the Pacific Ocean. I really am. I'm praying that God will put on the heart of some of these young people to go into the mission field, and I'm um, praying that the Lord will do that. You pray with me about that, won't you? So we heard this week a wonderful message about the next generation and how we need laborers, and it's our fault because we're not praying for them, and may God help us. I'm going to speak a little bit about that in just a moment, but pray for us as we uh, embark, as we finish this semester, and then we start a summer of camps and retreats, and pray for David and Taylor. Because they got a lot of work this summer. Aren't you excited, guys? And uh, I'm so grateful for both of them. They've just worked themselves to death sometimes. And they still like me. I don't know how that works. But uh, 
They have been such a help to us, and especially in the absence of my wife and myself this semester, they've just been so faithful. And the camp staff that will be coming here the end of May, and uh, young people, and uh, praying for young people that God will call them into the ministry. Amen? Amen. Reap an em- you'll reap a harvest where you place an emphasis. And may God help us to place an emphasis for people to give their lives to the Lord and uh, for these young people to do that. And so if you would pray for us, I sure would appreciate that. I'd like you to take the Word of God with me tonight and turn to the Gospel of John in chapter 17. The Gospel of John chapter 17. I was praying much about what to speak on tonight and asking the Lord to help me. And I'll tell you, sometimes with a missions conference, there's so many different things that you can speak on. And... Um, I'll be honest tonight, this is a very simplistic message, but it's one that I hope will help just motivate us to do more, to realize that your labor is not in vain. It's not in vain. What you saw right there is is the fact that it's not in vain. What we've heard from uh, the Putneys and from the Saltz family as they're going back as second generation missionary to England. Our labor is not in vain, but there's more to be done. And may God give us what we need to get it done and to, and to realize our time is short. Jesus is coming again, and we need to be ready for it. We need to be prepared for his coming. And I'll tell you what, when we see him, when that trumpet sounds, there won't be any other thoughts on our mind but him and eternity. And may God help us to live each day with eternity in view. Because that's the way we please Him. Tonight I'd like to just finish on a few things. And, and this might be a unique way of, or a message. But uh, I'd like to give just three simple areas. And they've all been touched on this week. So I'm not saying anything new. And I feel like I'm preaching to the choir. So bear with me, alright? But the reality is, is that there, these are the things, these are the areas in which God has given us. And how you can personally be involved in missions. How we can be personally involved in missions. And that's what it really all boils down to, isn't it? Because, you know, we can see others go and we can uh, pray for others go and and to do all these different things. But what is it that God wants us to do? What is it that God wants me to do? What is it that God wants you to do? I believe you're praying about that and I'm praying about that. And may God help us, though, to do more. Our theme for the semester this uh, year at, at the passage has been this in Second or First Thessalonians chapter four verse one, and at the end of it it says that ye may abound more and more. That's what the Christian life is intended to be: is for us to abound more and more. We never reach a, a, a place of perfection. Paul said, "That's not as though I have already attained, because none of us will attain until we see Jesus." And, and the, the Christian life is an upward life. It's one of, of going further and doing more for Christ as we learn and we grow. And, we, and God gives us more faith because the truth is none of this is done except by faith. Can I say this as I preach this and I'll mention it again. But everything I'm about to speak about, if it's not done by faith, it's not pleasing to the Lord. May God help us to realize that. And is God worthy to be trusted? Amen. Amen. He is trustworthy because he's faithful. And so tonight I'm going to give three simple ideas about missions and really how missions works. And ones, like I said, you've heard before. And I'd like to just give a simple biblical principle of these things. And then I'd like to share a testimony about each one. And then I'd like to make it personal. And so I'm asking the Lord to help us tonight and help me. Because I need to be reminded, don't, don't I? Do you need to be reminded tonight? We need to be reminded of these things and that our labor is not in vain and that God will do more if we'll allow Him. And so if you would, in John chapter 17, we'll begin reading in verse 20. And we're going to read down uh, to verse uh, 23. The Bible says, Neither pray I thee for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. That, that they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. 
And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. I in them, and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Lord, help us now in the next few minutes together as we, Lord, can conclude this missions conference. But God, it's not over. May we continue on in the things that Thou hast given us and the things that we must do and that, Lord, that You must accomplish through us. Lord, I pray tonight that You would take Thy Word and speak to us through it. Lord, challenge us. Convict us. Show us where we are distracted in the things that we waste our time and our resources on and enable us to do more for Thee. Lord, we thank you for your testimony of how you came from heaven to this earth. And you gave all so that we might have eternal life. May we be willing to give all for thee. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. And amen. You've heard them before, and so I know it's not new, but simply tonight I want to speak on these three areas. Pray, give, and go. Pray, give, and go. We've heard them so many times, have we not? I've heard them since... Before I think I was even born, because inside my mother, you know, as I heard the message is preached. I mean, as a missionary kid, I grew up hearing these things and over and over again. But yet I stand here before you tonight and will admit that I know I'm not done all that I could for Christ. And I'm not. That's that's hard. Sometimes it's hard for us to admit. But the truth is, we all have regrets, don't we? And we all have things that we know we could have done more and we could have done better. And, but by the grace of God, let's not live in the past or even live living the present from the past. But let's ask God to help us to press forward by faith in the future. Because the truth is God wants us to do more. God wants more to be done. He wants all to be saved. And God wants to use us to be a part of this. There is no greater work in this world than the work of saving souls. And that's why Christ came from heaven to die on the cross for our sins. We find here in this great chapter the the prayer of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And what a prayer, isn't it? What What a precious insight into the heart of our Savior. As He didn't pray for Himself, but He prayed for others. And He prayed that they would be sanctified by the truth. And he said the word is truth. And that's the desire of, of Christ. That people will be sanctified from the world. Sanctified from sin. Sanctified from the destruction that awaits those that are going to die in their sin. And he says the only way is through thy word. Because it's true. And he's given us this great opportunity. And then he, he doesn't just stop there as he prays for his disciples and he prays for those that would be saved. But then he continues to pray for those that in the days ahead that would be saved. Isn't that amazing? I think we do need to live here and now and live to please the Lord. But we also need to be realizing that there's coming a day when we're going to see Jesus and there's some things ahead of us as the Lord tarries that he wants to accomplish in and through us. Amen? He wants to get done, and it won't get done if we're not willing to let Him do it. And we'll miss out on it if we're not surrendered and submitted to Him. Just as it's it's the free choice of mankind to be saved, listen, it's a free choice for us to serve Him and to be used of the Lord. Amen. Amen. And so let's get on board with the Lord. Amen. Let's get on in, in what He's doing in this world and ask Him to do it. And here we see His prayer. He's praying for people to be saved. He says there in verse 21, he says that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. That's what this is all about, isn't it? It's about people believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. That God, the God, the creator of this world. Let me tell you something. There's a lot of people in this world that believe in a God. A higher power. uh, All kinds of different things. But that won't get you to heaven. He won't get people to heaven. Why? Because the only way to get to heaven is through the one who said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. 
And we need to pray for people to be saved. We need to pray for the lost to come to Christ. And and it is so true. Every revival of salvation and every revival of soul winning has begun on on our knees, not in our actions. So I'll tell you what, we can't save anybody, amen? But we know someone who can. And we seek Him by prayer as the Lord Jesus Christ did. That they would be one in Him and that we, would be, that we would be made perfect. There's only one way to be made perfect and that's through Jesus Christ. And that's the need of the world, isn't it? And we're, as the Lord gives us the example of prayer, are we praying for people? Are we praying for this world? Are we praying for the unreached people of this world? The places that have not heard and you, you think that's not possible. Oh, it's very possible. There's places all over this world of people that have never heard of Jesus Christ and that He can save them. We need to pray for Him, don't we? We need to seek God. He said in Matthew 9, 36 through 38, and we know it, we've heard it this week, pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that He would what? Send forth laborers. And we can can see things happen if we'll pray, but we won't see things happen if we don't. You say, boy, you're putting a lot of responsibility on us. I'm not. God is. We're good, at, we're good at explaining responsibility away. Some of us have never gotten over that since we were teenagers. Amen? We've just mastered it a little better. It's our responsibility to pray. We need to pray more fervently. I want to share a uh, testimony about this. The truth is, I don't believe that God would have sent us to this island nation if it wasn't because of the prayers of people. There's a, a do, uh, well, he's, I have, it's a long story, but when we were uh, on deputation, we made a web page and so people could find information about us. And one day I got an email while we were on deputation from this man and he introduced himself and he didn't say a whole lot, but the first thing I'll never forget he asked me was he said, I'd like to know what you believe about how a person gets saved or how a person is saved. And so I wrote back and I'm like, man, I don't get many opportunities when people ask you that kind of thing. And so I wrote back the gospel and told them exactly what I believe, how a person gets saved. And let me tell you something, it's for by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. And so I gave him verses and I, I just spelled it out and And that was one of the first things he asked me. So he wrote back and he said, I'm glad to hear that because that's what I believe. Then he went on to share with me his testimony how he was a national from Kiribati who God had blessed with intellect and he got his own scholarship to come to the U.S. He got his bachelor's in some really high above my intellect science degree. And at that time, he was actually at the University of Alabama getting his Ph.D. in molecular neuroscience or something like that. I mean, just amazing. This islander from an island in the Pacific that you think all they do is climb coconut trees and eat fish. And here he is out here doing this, and, and he began to share with me his testimony. And it's amazing, but he said, I, I grew up and, and my family very religious. I'd go to church, but I began to just see that the message of our, our missionaries, that's what they call a pastor over there, the message of our pastors, it did not line up with the Word of God. And he said, and, and, and they, they would not let us read the Word of God, and they said we were not able to understand the Word of God without them telling us what it says. But he didn't believe it. I'm glad he didn't, aren't you? Yeah. And so he said, Lord, I want to know the truth and I want to know how to be saved. And through reading the word of God, he accepted the Lord as his Savior. Amen. 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 By faith. Or sorry, uh, by faith. How does it come? By hearing the word of God. He got saved. And so he, he, he did. He says, and I, I, I've read the Bible. I believe in God. And he came. Then God blessed him. And he, went to the, he came to the U.S., got his bachelor's. And while he was getting his bachelor's, he got invited to a Baptist church. And the church just ministered to him. And he said, I began to grow. And then he said, we had something called a missions conference. I never heard of that before. What is a missions conference? And so just as a baby Christian, he went to this missions conference and he heard the messages like we have heard and and he began to pray for somebody to take the gospel to his country, to his people. 
And I'm, I'm telling you, I still get goosebumps about this. And I'm just like, wow. And I, I wrote back to him. I said, can you tell me the year in which this happened and maybe even the month in which you began to pray that God would send for somebody? And I'll tell you what, are you listening? The exact same month that he began to pray is the exact same time God put it on my heart and my wife's heart to go there. Now, it took a few years for it all to come together and for me to meet him. But he was excited and I was excited. And I thought, God is a great God. But you know what? It takes some faith, doesn't it, to believe that? And, and, And it may take some patience and some endurance to pray. This guy had prayed for almost four years by that point, praying fervently that somebody would go to his country and he searched and looked and online and there up popped our face. Here's a family from America going to Kiribati. I'll tell you what, he's one of my greatest encouragers and still is to today. You know what he's doing? He's right now gone back to school and getting a medical doctorate because he says that's the only way I can go back to Kiribati and really help them and be able to give the gospel to the people of my country. You know what, not only did he pray about it, but now he's going. See how amazing that is? We need to pray. So I've given you the biblical principle. I've shared the testimony. But can we get real tonight? How many of you will join me and ask God to give you a specific country this year that doesn't have the gospel? And there's some places you can find it. There's places online, lists of unreached countries in the world. And say, by the grace of God, I'm going to pray for that country all this year that God would send forth a laborer. Maybe we all take a different one. How many of you will say, Brother Deku, I'll do that? Can you raise your hand? Amen. Just, just raise your hand one more minute for me. Just think, if we prayed and God sent people to all these countries, what could happen? Yeah. You think God's not big enough or God won't do it? No, 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 no. He will. I, I, I'm living proof that He will. What could God do? That's exciting, isn't it? I mean, pray specifically for a country that does not have a gospel witness and say, Lord, send somebody there. Now, be patient about it. You may not find out for several years. You may not find out at all until you get to eternity. But that doesn't matter. God hears and answers prayer, doesn't He? May the Lord help us to pray more because we can the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man. It availeth much. It availeth much. It can move mountains. It can see the power of God. We're not seeing the work of God do what it should because we're not praying for it. That's what my Bible says. You have not because we what? Ask not. we got to get back to some old-fashioned, basic Christianity. And that's where it begins in prayer to ask God and say, God, do something. Do something powerful. Do something amazing. And may you be glorified. Pray pray daily. Pray often. And pray without ceasing. When When God puts a specific person on your heart, pray for them. Pray for the lost. Pray for the people around here that we know. Pray for the ones that we have. Man, if we would quit wasting our time on everything else this world distracts us from and just got back to a holy prayer time on our knees, what could be accomplished? We spend so much ridiculous time on these phones. Amen. Uh, When we lived on the islands over there, it was great. Our internet was horrible. It was horrible. They had, we had what was called coconut wireless. It was literally a modem that hung up in the trees, and it was horrible. It never worked. cost like $300 a month. It was crazy. But I, I'm grateful for that now. You know why I'm grateful for that now? It's because it gave me time to be present with the Lord and to pray and to have a better walk with Him. I'll tell you what, this dumb thing drives me nuts. And I'm glad I live out the passage now because I don't get good cell service sometimes. It's a good excuse. Do, you, guys, do some of you remember the day when you could call somebody and they were allowed not to call you back in two days until they could? You left voicemail or like on your answering machine? Those were the good days, weren't they? If you don't respond within one second of a text message, you're in trouble. Because we're so caught up in these things. 
You know what? Turn off the phone and spend some time on our knees. Turn off the phone and the TV. Because it's all a bunch of depressing stuff anyhow. I'll tell you what, you'll be able to watch the news a whole lot better if you start first praying and reading your Bible. And remembering that we don't have to be troubled by these things. Amen? We do. we got to get back to just praying. Lord, do something. We want to see it, but we're not willing to labor for it. Do you know the Bible says that prayer is a labor? It takes work, doesn't it? Our relationship with the Lord, our walk with the Lord is labor. And if we're not willing to put the, the effort in, we won't see the results. Number two, not only pray, but then give. Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. One of my favorite books of the Bible is Philippians. A wonderful book. In this last chapter, and really this is a prayer letter of the Apostle Paul. I love it. <laughs> you get all the prayer letters back there on the wall of the things that your missionaries are doing. And, and it's just wonderful to read uh, the work of God from around the world. But here Paul's writing to the church at Philippi. And, and he's writing to them in chapter 4. Wonderful verses. In verse 11 he says, Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be what? Content. To be content. Isn't it wonderful when you serve the Lord, you're content? Can I say this? I'll echo what Brother Putney said. Don't feel sorry for your missionaries. God is good. God takes care of us. God blesses us. And people would say to me all the time, don't you think your kids are missing out on all the great things America has to offer? I'm like, no, no way. No way, sorry. Amen? Because I'll tell you what, we get to serve the Lord. See God do great things. Amen? Amen. He says there in verse 12, I know both how to be a base and I know how to abound in everywhere and in all things. I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. You know what? We need to get back to some suffering needs as Christians. We need to give until we suffer a little bit. We need to give and make some sacrifices. You know, it's kind of like what we do is we kind of look at what we have and we say, well, you know, as long as all the, everything that I need is taken care of, then it's all right. That's not really suffering need, is it? You know, we're not living in America in a place of reliance upon God. Why? Because we're relying upon ourselves. Amen? That's why I love being a missionary. You know why? Because I don't get a paycheck every week. I get paid once a month through support, and I never know what's coming in. Every missionary will tell you. And what's amazing is nobody else knows what I need, but God always supplies every month. Some months when I need more, there's more there. Some months when, there, when I need less, there's less there. But God takes care and supplies the need. That's why Paul is saying, he says, I've, I've abounded and I've suffered, but you know what, God, I'm content with the Lord because he takes care of me. And then he continues on edifying the church. He says, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Notwithstanding, we have well done that ye did communicate with my affliction. Now ye Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but ye only. For even in Thessalonica ye sent once and again unto my necessity. You know, missionaries are not asking for your money. You know, I've heard them all. You know, you know what the missionary handshake is, don't you? Right? That's what, that's what they think missionaries are good at, just asking for money all the time. <laughs> you know what, though? It does cost money to buy airplane tickets. It costs money to travel to places and pay for things and to, and to be able to do what you need to do. Paul had to do that, amen? And, and he was a tent maker. But you know why he was a tent maker? It's because his supporting churches didn't support him like they promised they would. Do you know what? I'll do whatever it takes to get the gospel out, just like Paul did, amen? And God will get it done, one way or the other. That's what I love about it, don't you? You know why? Because Paul said this as a missionary, I'm not depending on people, I'm depending on God, because I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. You know what, that's the same for all of us, shouldn't it be? We can depend on the Lord. Some people are like, oh no, our country America is going to fall apart, and all the money, oh, bread's going up. You know those loaves of bread at Walmart? They're $1.50. Goodness gracious. What are we going to do? They used to be a dollar, amen? Now they put them on clearance for a dollar because nobody would buy them for a dollar fifty. Good job, everybody, you know? Uh, people are like, the end of the, what are we going to do? We're going to trust God. 
Amen. Amen. We're going to trust God by faith. Because he said, uh, David said, I was young and now I'm old and I've yet to see the righteous begging for bread. You know why? Because we have a God that will supply all our needs. And he reminds them in this verse here. Look what he says in verse 17. Not because I desire gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. Doesn't the Bible say that we would abound more and more? Listen, when you give to the work of missions, it goes on the record in heaven. It says, lay up your treasures where? In heaven. Lay up all the things that God has blessed us with in the work of eternity because there's nothing better you can invest your life and your resources in than that. The things of this world will be destroyed. The things of this world will not last. They won't last. And we get so caught up in the materialism of America Uh, To be honest with you, I've made a commitment this year, and I'm going to make it public. But I only now buy one cup of coffee a week. You know why? Because those things are six, seven bucks. It's ridiculous. Do you know what we could do in the work of the Lord with just one cup of coffee? That could print two Bibles. Send it to people that could be saved. You say, well, what do you, why are you, that's crazy. Why are you doing that? Because I'd rather see people get saved than drink. I'll drink Folgers. It's better, amen? It's cheaper. But what, somebody could get saved. And you say, well, that's, that's crazy. No, that's just what's important in your life. Because I tell you what, you drink that cup of coffee, it's here now and it's gone. And, and, and it, it doesn't last. Oh, may the Lord help us to realize, to give and to give. You know what the Bible says, though, is when you give to the work of the Lord and you hear what God does with it, it's cheerful. It's joyful. God loves a cheerful giver. And there's cheerfulness and there's joy when you can give what God's blessed you with to the work of God. And the work of God goes on and people are saved and you won't realize it till eternity, but that will give dividends forever. Amen. Amen. Not anything in this world you could put your money in that could say that. Amen? Not a thing. But you can in the work of the Lord. We need to do a better job of giving. Give what you have that is not yours. What you reap is what you sow. Uh, God will reward those that give cheerfully. Are we doing these things? We can all do a better job. And then he finishes And he says there in verse 18, But I have all and abound, and I am full, having received of Epaphrodites the things which were sent from you, an odor of sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well-pleasing to God. I love that last part. It's pleasing to God. Amen? And then he says here in verse 19, But my God shall supply all your need according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. In 2 Corinthians chapter 8, it says that the church in Macedonia, they gave out of their poverty. They gave out of of not having something, but they gave, and they gave cheerfully. Why? Because they first gave themselves to the Lord. They first gave themselves and said, Lord, I'm I'm not going to do what I want to do. I'm going to do what you want me to do. What I have is not mine. It's yours, Lord. You know what? God can take everything away from us like that. Maybe that's what America needs. Maybe that's what we need in America is God take away his blessing so we get right with him. May the Lord help us. He'll supply if we'll just trust him. He'll supply if we'll just believe him. And his word is true. His promises are everlasting. And then I love verse 20 because I don't want to miss this. Now unto God and our Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. You know who gets all the glory? He does. I've heard it said, and I believe this is true, that there's only one thing you can do that brings glory to God. And and the Bible says that in heaven, all of heaven rejoices. And that's when one sinner repents. The work of the gospel. Wow. Some of us think that our... So-called spirituality makes heaven rejoice. (laughs) Right? The way we read our Bibles. Oh, of heaven rejoices when you get up in the morning and read your Bible. Is that what the Bible says? No, when one sinner repents. 
all of heaven rejoices. I want to give you, I know my time's going, so I'll be quick. But here's the testimony. The people of Kiribati, it was amazing. And they're such a poor, poverty-sticking country. They, they really are. They, they're, they're like below the third world level, uh, according to the world standards. And they have nothing. But they're the most content people you ever meet. Which puts us to shame, doesn't it? They live in huts and live day to day on rice and fish, but they're happy and content. We don't get our coffee. We just, I can't survive today without my coffee. Help us, Lord. Amen. Can I hear an amen? It's getting real quiet in here tonight. But, you know, the thing is, is the content people. And you know what is so amazing? And this is common in all third world countries. If you ever travel, you'll see this. That religion has such an authority over people in the world. You may not realize that here in America. And it's not really the case here. But in most countries of the world, religion is even more wealthier than government is. So often. And it's because, you know what religion demands of its members? And the churches that are uh, the established religion, they require more than the 10%. They require in Kiribati a certain amount of money that every family has to give. And it's not just a percentage, it's a certain amount. And they put your name up on the wall of shame each week if you don't give it. They have certain people within the family that all they do is fundraise trying to reach their quota for their family to give each week. I mean, unbelievable stuff like this. And they're greedy. And they see their missionaries and their pastors literally pocket the tithe money and go out and buy booze with it and cigarettes and have a good time. But the religious people of, of that place were just, just, just doing such horrific things in the name of God that won't amount to anything. And so when we got there and we, we began to preach the gospel and people got saved and then we discipled them and began to teach them what the Bible says. I'll never forget this one lady when I began to teach her on what the Bible says about giving financially and that we're to just give 10%. And I'll tell you, it was great. We had people that didn't have money. They gave the first fruits of their crop to the Lord. They gave their eggs. One of them had chickens. So they'd give their eggs to their pastor. Amen. And they, they did things because they believed in this and they realized that God's word said it and that, that, that way makes sense, not the way the religious people were doing it. And so they began to give. And this little church, unbelievable, the things that God was blessing the church with and how they were being blessed. And then we had our first missions conference. Man, alive. And they just like, what's a missions conference? I love it starting with people that have never heard it before because you all that have heard it your whole life, you're just... Something to behold. I got to look at you. All you got to do is look at me. Amen. <laughs> Just kidding. You know, but they loved it. They got on board with it. And I said, this is what God says. We give our tithe, but then we can give above and beyond that. But guess what? Nobody knows that. That's between you and the Lord. There's no wall of shame. Amen. What if Pastor Garcia next week puts up the names up here of everybody and what they give? Bet you'd all leave this church, wouldn't you? <laughs> but I said, you know what? God keeps the records in heaven. And you make a commitment. We practice faith promise. And, and we had them. And some of them gave 10 cents a week. Some of them gave 50 cents a week. I was blown away by what some of them were willing to give. And our little church raised $5,000 in the first year. Second, the, two weeks after we started it, I went to one of the dear ladies there and was doing a Bible study with her and her husband. And she says, Pastor, I have a big question for you. I said, yes, what is it? And she says, I've been giving every week. And she told me the amount. I was like, don't tell me what the amount is, okay? They didn't quite grasp the, the concept, all right? I said, don't tell me. You tell God, okay? Okay, I got that figured out. And she says, are we, are we allowed to give more than what we put on the faith promise card? <laughs> I said, yes! Oh, I thought that if we wrote that down, we couldn't give any more than what we said we would give. But she said, I'm telling you, Pastor, that since I gave my offering to missions, and it, it was a lot of money, she told me. So it wasn't my fault, she told me, okay? And I'm just like blown away already by that. But she says, I've trusted God to give this, and God has blessed me so much, I want to give more. And I said, you give all that you want to give. Because God will keep blessing you and He'll keep providing and He'll keep meeting your needs. And here a simple person that doesn't have much can learn that. Why can't we? To give and to give more. But it starts with us giving our lives. Here's the personal challenge. How many of you will ask the Lord 
to show you something that you can give up personally. I've just told you what mine is, coffee. Once a week. That's all I'll do. I'll drink good old Folgers the rest of the time. Good stuff. I'm telling you, these young people, I'm going to pick on them. They spend more money on coffee than I've ever seen somebody pen on coffee. I expect all of you up at the altar tonight getting right with the Lord. (laughs) That's because I love you. But what is it? Maybe it's something else. Maybe there's something that you know that really isn't a necessity. It's more of a luxury. Are you willing to give that up? Maybe to suffer a little need. Maybe a, a big need. To say, God, I want to give this to the work of eternity. Amen? Amen. Who will join me? Nothing's specific, or nothing's personal until it's specific. Amen? God, help me to give up something. Maybe it's McDonald's breakfast, and you add an extra $5 to your, 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 maybe it's something bigger. You know what? Little is much when God is in it. We heard this morning. Amen. You say my five loaves and two fishes. What does that amount to? That can do impossible things with God. What are we willing to make personal and sacrifice? Almost done. Are you guys with me? Last thing. We've seen pray, give, and go. Go. Man, what a powerful message Brother Putney brought on the need for laborers. And what we can do to see more laborers go. And oh, if God doesn't stir our hearts about that, I don't know. Something's not right with us, like you said, brother. May we pray more fervently. May we do these things. But you know what? We need to be an example by going ourselves. I I realize where I fail in this. I realize where I fail and I put an emphasis on things that aren't eternal in the busyness of life. And I fail to be an example to the next generation. We can do a better job, can't we? We can do a better job by showing them that, we're, that what is important in life is to take the gospel to people. To take the gospel to our loved ones. To take our gospel to our neighbors. To take our gospel to people. Can I tell you this? Every time I went somewhere with my dad, he was witnessing to somebody. Every time. I believe my dad to be one of the greatest soul owners I know. And he's still telling people about God. I'm grateful for that example. But am I being an example? Am I obeying the command? And we get so easily caught up. I'm admitting that. To not go. The testimony of this is a young lady you saw on there. Her name is Daisy. Daisy. What a wonderful young lady. And this young lady was a strong Catholic. Very strong Catholic. And um, she had a cousin who was from England. And her cousin came and uh, heard about our church and came to our church. And she said, you need to come with me, Daisy, to this Baptist church. You would like it. And she goes, no way. If it's not Catholic, it's, it's a lie. And so she, she would not go. She would not come. And her cousin continued to just say, you come, you come. And so finally, Daisy's like, no, you need to come to the Catholic church. Now, I don't recommend this to anybody, okay? But her cousin says, okay. If I go to the Catholic church with you, then you got to come to the Baptist church with me. And so she did. And then the girl agreed, and she came to the church, and she's never left since. She got saved, and she grew. And I'll tell you what, I have never honestly met somebody that has personally won more people to the Lord than that young lady has. It's amazing. God blessed her with a four-year scholarship to go overseas And she's now back, and she's got a position that's what, and God has just blessed her. And guess what she's still doing? Bringing people to the gospel. She challenges me. She used to bring people to me all the time, Pastor, because of young young guys, and she's like, I don't feel comfortable witnessing the guys, so I'm bringing them to you, Pastor, so you can tell them how to be saved. Bring them on, Daisy, I'll tell them, amen? And she would, she'd bring these young men, and some of them were after her, but she, she's like, doesn't matter, you need to come. And I was just there, and she has a young man now that's, that, has, that has been saved and baptized and joined the church, and he's a doctor that has been trained overseas. God's just blessed her life, but here's the testimony, and I'll be done. She, he said to me, he says, Brother Deku, he says, you know, when I first started liking Daisy, she didn't like me. 
I thought, boy, you know, she ought to like me. I'm a catch. I've got something to offer kind of thing, you know. And, and Daisy, and, and he says, and she says to him, you know, and so she, they were friends and all this. And then she said to him, she said, who do you love the most? It really blew this young man out of the water, you know, like, what do you mean? Uh, he goes, this is easy. That's what he said. This is an easy answer. He goes, you, of course. And she says, wrong answer. And you know what happened is, is that uh, she wouldn't tell him what the answer was. And he just kept begging, tell me what the answer is. You mean, you, don't you want me to love you? I love you. I'll get, you know how guys lie to the girls all the time. And he did. He wasn't saved. Was, I'll give you the world. I'll swim the deepest ocean, whatever, you know. And, and the truth is, is that, that he w she would not tell him the answer. And he said to me, he says, but pastor... She kept inviting me to church, and I finally came. And as I sat there and I heard the Word of God preach, and he goes, I grew up in church my whole life, a religious person. But he said, but when I came to the Baptist church, all I heard about was Jesus. Jesus. And he said, I knew what the answer was. Who I should love most is Jesus. What a testimony. And you know what? When he came back, he says, the answer to that question is Jesus. And they're now engaged. And I'm praying God will use them both mightily in the days ahead. Because a young lady got saved from the bondage and the darkness of religion and of this world. She was a good person. But she finally found a relationship with Christ. And she couldn't help but tell everybody. I would, I would dare to say that Close to half the people in that church are because of Daisy and her, her, her witnessing to people and bringing them to church. And then you know what? The people she brought to church, her friends, they reached people. And the multiplication of people that got saved and more and more people have gotten saved as a result of that. All because a young lady says, I'm not going to be ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Because it's the power of God unto salvation. Are you saved tonight? Have you been saved by the power of God through salvation, through the work that He accomplished on the, on the cross? Then what are we ashamed about? But to proclaim the name of Christ everywhere we go. To tell people that He is the way, the truth, and the life. And we need to be an example of that. We need to be an example of going ourselves. You say, well, I can't go to the foreign field. But you can go across the street, amen? Amen. Can I say this too? That I believe there's people in this very auditorium that God wants to go to the foreign fields. You need to give your life to the Lord and go. God's putting it in your heart to do something for Him in this way. Do it! Because that's all that will matter one day. Don't disobey. Give it to the Lord. Pray, give, and go. Because one day, that's all that will matter. And may God help us to do more of it. And you know what the Bible says? And so much the more as you see the day approaching. I want to finish by reading that verse to you of that, of that song. And we'll pray. By and by, when I look on His face, beautiful face, born shadowed face, by and by, when I look on His face, I wish I'd given Him more. By and by, when he holds out his hands, welcoming hands, nail-driven hands. By and by, when he holds out his hands, I wish I'd given him more. In the light of that heavenly place, light from his face, beautiful face, in the light of the heavenly place, I wish I'd given him more. Treasures unbounded for him I adore. By and by, when I look on his face. I wish I'd given him more. Have we given ourselves fully to the Lord? Have we given our possessions fully to the Lord? Have we given our time to go with the gospel to the Lord? What is it that God wants us to do? I've committed to give more of my time to personally go and win people to the lost. 
Truth is, out where we live out there, it's kind of like one of those things of like, well, there's nobody out here to go witness to because there's only 500 people and we've knocked their door three times. <laughs> but God's put a burden on my heart to drive 45 minutes to the town of Sandpoint and begin to soul win there. And I'm committing publicly to do that and to take whoever wants to go with me and take the gospel to whoever will listen. How many of you will say, by the grace of God, I'll go out and witness more in this upcoming year? Maybe give out more tracts. Maybe be purposeful about it. Then let's ask God to help us to do that. Oh, by and by, I wish I'd given him more. Let's pray. God, I thank you for thy word. And these are no doubt familiar things, but I realize in my own life how I fail to do them. God, help us to do more. Help us to be more fervent in prayer. To pray specifically for the unreached places of the world that have never heard. God, help us to do that. Lord, I pray for giving. May we give ourselves first to the Lord. Forgive me for my selfishness. God, forgive us for the things that we fail to do for Thee because we haven't given ourselves to You. When we place our life on the altar, Lord, as Paul said, as a living sacrifice every day, an attitude of surrender and sacrifice to give, to give ourselves, to give of what You've given us, so that the gospel can go forth. May we do it by faith, Lord. May we pray in faith and give in faith and then go. Lord, go across the street, around the corner, and around the world with the gospel. God, I pray tonight specifically for people here in this auditorium that, God, you have a calling, a will for their life to serve you in full-time missions. God, I pray that they quit struggling and quit trying to fight you with, their own desires, but to just give in and to let you, God, show them your will and do great and mighty things in their life. Lord, for all of us, help us to quit fighting and just go. Lord, help us to keep these commitments that we've made and to do them with your help and your grace. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Let's have our heads bowed, and we'll uh, we'll let the piano play.